It's time for the College Football National Championship game. It's a new year, but we're still here on the Big Mountain, where we bring you a detailed focus on the Big Ten, the Mountain West, and all the bowls. That is a new hook, and I love it. <laughs> I am JY. This is my good friend Steve. If you're new to the Mountain, welcome. If you've seen us before, we're going to go over both the semifinal games real briefly. We'll just kind of give our takes on the semifinal games, because obviously we're going to be talking about the two winners of those semifinal games, and then giving you our analysis and picks for the national championship game, the Michigan Wolverines versus the Washington Huskies. So, Steve, I'm going to throw it to you first. We'll start with the Michigan-Bama game. What were your thoughts on that game? So, well, first of all, overall, just just another classic, great college football playoff game. Two storied programs. Mm -hmm. Game goes to overtime. Massive ratings in the Rose Bowl. Beautiful backdrop in stadium. I'm so glad they've... They've continued to use the Rose Bowl as a college football playoff site. I yep. mean, nothing more beautiful than that with the mountains in the background and the sunset and, and you know, these awesome programs fighting it out for a chance to go to the national championship game. Now, yep. I had picked Alabama to win this game. I thought that they had a better roster. You had gone with Michigan. Yep. Uh, we're, so we're, both of us were watching the first half separately and we're texting each other. Mm -hmm. And right away at the beginning, you know, the, the Michigan defense has given Alabama all kinds of trouble. Yep. Jalen Milrow, God bless him. Uh, he had no idea what he was doing at the beginning of the game as far as blitz pickups, who was coming, whatever. He just was totally lost in the sauce at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And and really the Alabama offensive line, you, you know, we knew this coming in. Their strength is not pass protection. Right. That's right. where they've struggled all year. Their strength is line up and run the ball, power mm -hmm. running game is where they usually do better. Yeah. They've struggled in pass pro. And, and Michigan, you know, their scheme, their defensive coordinator, their talent and experience on the defensive line, they were just giving Alabama everything that they could handle. Yep. Uh, I, and honestly, it kind of went back and forth. It was a little strange. I think maybe there was a turnover or, or, a, or a muff punt or something. Yes. Uh, we get to the end of the first half tied, and both of us are saying, how the heck is this game tied? Yeah. Like, M Michigan seemed like they dominated the yes. first half. Uh, Alabama finally did... And I was texting. I was. I was saying yeah, they they can't just drop Jalen Milrow back in in and expect him to pick apart this Michigan defense because it ain't. It's not happening. Right. Like that's just not going to happen. Right. They did finally start to run the ball a little bit towards the end of the first half, which I think helped them stabilize. You know, uh, set stabilize the ship, kind of. You know, get things back on, on balance. They go to the half tied, and really they came out in the second half. Alabama came out in the second half, did what I expected them to do the whole yep. game, which was more that power run game style. Uh, Alabama takes the lead at one point. We're, we're kind of getting late in the third quarter, maybe into the fourth. And you, and you text me and you say, Michigan has to score a touchdown yes, here I did. or they're done. Yeah. And so you went from this point where it looked like Alabama finally figured out what they were doing. Yep. And, they're, and they have a chance to basically put the game away, yep. run the clock out, score another touchdown, whatever. For some reason, they go away from what was working okay. and go back to just letting Jalen Milrow run around, play hero ball, mm -hmm. which is great. He's a great athlete. He's a, he's a very good player. And when he when he's when he's playing hero ball, sometimes he's successful and it yeah. looks great. Yeah. But sometimes it looks god awful. And there were points in the game that looked god awful. So they went back to that and and with bad results, yeah. Michigan gets the ball back. And, and what I'll say about Michigan is, first of all. You know, we've been harsh on Jim Harbaugh all year for some of the other stuff that's mm. gone on and whatever, you know. But we've been consistent. He's just a really good coach. You know, yep. X's and O's, he's a good coach. Whatever you think of him as a person, as a character, whatever. Yep. Uh, and I said, you know, Saban, th these are the kind of games, you know, Saban, when he has all this time, he out coaches everybody. Well, this is the first time I can remember in this kind of playoff era, mm -hmm. Saban got completely out coached. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh. And the, and the other coaches at Michigan, I mean, just completely outcoached them, both on offense and defense. They they kept going back to scheming things, whatever. What, what, the things that were working, they kept going back to yes. it. Maybe change it a little bit if they needed, but they kept going back to it. Like you were talking about, um, Michigan was doing this where they were putting a player in motion yep. and throwing to him. Yep. Well, Alabama just had no, no. – they, they did not adjust to that. Michigan no. could just keep going back to the well, back to the well. So they mixed that in with a power running game. Um, and they just kept going back, even when they were down, because at one point they were down, it looked like they, yeah. they, it was going to be rough for them yeah. in the second half. Yeah. They kept going back to their bread and butter. They made little tweaks, little adjustments. And overall, the Michigan staff and Jim Harbaugh completely out outcoached Saban in my mind. Yeah. Michigan got a huge win in overtime. And again, 
the the overtime was basically a kind of a uh, microcosm of the whole okay. game. Yeah. Uh, Alabama trying dumb stuff and their offensive line struggling, bad snaps, whatever. Yep. And Michigan just going back to their bread and butter. Yep. What they know, they do well, and they did it again. They do it better than anybody else, and they score the touchdown. They get the win. Yep. Great win for Michigan. Yeah. I mean, I, a couple things. I totally agree. I mean, the D-line for Michigan – just the pass rush that they had in the first half. Uh, and that's why at the halftime I go, how is this close? Because that, that pass rush that they had was incredible. What they have, I think it was five sacks yeah. in the first half, and maybe it ended up more. I don't remember. But I feel like five they said five in the first half. In the first and half. they were bringing one extra rusher every yes. time. Just one. Yes. Every time. Uh, so that, that was really impressive. But the, an adjust, adjustment was made in the third quarter from Alabama so that they, they ran a little bit more then they couldn't get that pass rush and they were having uh, it was working out for them. I yes. mean, it, it, and, and then they like you said, they just kind of went away from it again. Um, so I, I, I really scratched my head a little bit about what Alabama was doing. I feel like they did make the adjustment that needed to be made and it was working and then they went away from and then they kind of stopped again yeah. and I don't I don't really know why. Um, I will say uh, the mistakes in this game, in both games, I've said this to Steve many, many times. You probably got tired of me saying it. I couldn't believe the mistakes that are, that are happening. This I know they've had some time off, but they've been practicing. I mean, the muff punts, again, in both semifinal games, yeah. it, it just it, it blows my mind. I don't understand it. But uh, you say it's trust. I say I don't buy that whatsoever. They shouldn't be doing it. But they both did it. So maybe maybe you're right. It's trust. Um Corum was really impressive for me. Uh, you know, not a big guy, but my goodness, he's a little pissed in that. That yeah. kid, that guy just goes, man. Leg drive. Never oh stops. my goodness gracious! Yeah, he, no give up on that guy whatsoever. Um, I, two other things I just want to mention. You know, the, the QBs clearly th- there was a difference at the QB level here. Uh, and you said in one of your texts, well, if JJ was on the Alabama it side, wouldn't Alabama, it wouldn't be close. Yeah. Alabama would be winning. Not to put it all on, on their quarter. Was Mil, Milroy? Milroy, yeah. Milroy. Milroy. And not to put it all on him, because it wasn't all on him. Right. But it, you could see the difference in the abilities of the quarterback. Some of that being the O-line yeah. um, and, and the inability of their O-line at, at Bama to, to protect him a little bit in the, in the throwing game. Uh, but when it got to overtime, I'm thinking, man, I'd much rather have the Michigan offensive defense right now yeah. than the Bama offensive defense because I figured Michigan was going to be able to score. I wasn't sure if Alabama was going to be able to score, and they didn't. Um, but, yeah, when 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 Michigan had to score, in my opinion, had to score on that drive, you put it on the back of your offense. I'm not just going to say J.J., the entire offense. Yeah. They drive the field. They get the touchdown. That's what champions are made of. Yep. The better team won this game. I'm sorry. The better team won this game. I don't think it should have gone to overtime. I think they were the better team to win this game straight up uh, from what we saw on that field. That's my take. Uh, we ready to go to Washington and Texas? Yeah, let's do it. Washington and Texas. So, again, we disagreed. I took Washington getting the points. I said I'd love for them to win, but very happy getting the four and a half. You took Texas. You kind of changed your mind, you said, with looking at some of the stats. I think especially the defensive stats for, for Texas. Um but, you know, I had said there's nothing for me to, to say that Penix can never rise above any sort of game. And you look at that offense. Another game I go, I think Washington could have won this, could have won this game by more than they did. I was kind of saying to you, I don't understand the score. And you're like, well, it, the scoring doesn't matter as long as you're scoring. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. have to be pretty. Yes. It doesn't ha- matter how you do it as long as you're doing it. Well, let me tell you, there is some prettiness on the there Washington offense. Passing, side. pretty passing. passing. Yes. Holy crud, holy. Johnson, you know, he didn't really uh, uh, break anything. He was serviceable, had two touchdowns. You know, you could see how strong that Texas line was. Yeah. Went for it on fourth down. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. But then they did it again, and they were able to break through. So it's not like they just went away from it. They said, hey, we know that's your strength. We're going to try to, you know, hit you in, on all facets of the game. And the Huskies did that. Um, and, you know, their, their defense was, was good enough. You know, they're not the best defense in the country. They weren't coming in as the best defense in the country. Uh, but they're good enough. And when you have an offense like that and a, everybody that can just rise above and perform, again, Odunze, just incredible. That guy is incredible. And, and the second receiver, uh, is it Polk? I'm drawing a blank. They got three or four. Uh, they they have several. Games. McMillan had a great yeah, game. I think it's Polk. I might, I might be saying his name wrong. Uh, but he had a fantastic game. And, again, just so many targets for for 
Penix to throw to here. You know, if he doesn't like one, he just goes to another one. They all got great hands. Um, so I could sit here and just talk up the Washington offense the rest of the, the episode, and that's not what we're here for. I loved watching the game. Like I said, I feel like Washington could have won by more than they did. I love the fact that we've got Michigan and Washington in this championship game. The two teams that should have been – the two teams at the top of our power we, rankings we pretty much – other than Ohio State bopping up there time. at one point. Yeah. But – I mean, these two teams were at the top of our power rankings pretty much the whole year. I'm glad to see it. They're both very well-deserving, both undefeated. What do you think about that semifinal? Yeah, great game. Great performance by Penix yet again. Uh, I kept saying all season he was my Heisman Trophy winner. Yes. I think it's an absolute travesty that he was not the Heisman Trophy winner. The, 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 the trophy is not supposed to go to the person who runs up the best stats. It's supposed to be the best player. And I don't know how you can watch these games this year mm -hmm. and not see – uh, Penix's performances over and over again, especially in those big games against yep. Oregon, and now we see it again in this game, over and over again when the yep. game is – the football is about winning. You know, it's not about running up fancy stats against crap teams or late in games and garbage time running up fancy stats. It's about winning, and it is a tragedy that Penix did not win. He was absolutely robbed out of the Heisman this year. Agree. I don't know what the voters were thinking, other than they do this weird regional voting – and Bo Nix and Penix are both in that Northwest region. They yeah. kind of split the vote. Okay. And then the rest of the country is dominated, you know, the Southern and Eastern. But whatever. Uh, it really wasn't close in the voting. But to me, Penix should have been the, the – and he showed it again, that yeah. he should have been the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. Best player in the country. Best quarterback in the country. Yep. The guy you want back there when the game is on the line, yep. bar none. Yep. Um, and, and he was that guy again. Now, and I said, you know – I picked Texas, and I said, I hope I'm wrong because right. I, wa I, right. I want Washington you to You said win. you're rooting for Washington. Yes, but, yeah. exactly. I, and I bet Washington yeah. money line, actually, and won some good money on them, so I'm happy. Yeah. Um, but you, there, and I'm hoping, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about this game, Michigan and Washington. I know we're going to talk about it a little yeah. bit. I will tell you there's some things that worry me about Washington, things that worry me about coming into the game. They were able to overcome that, especially all the points they scored early in the game, yeah. those beautiful pass plays and everything. But I kept telling you later on in the game, the third down conversion, absolutely horrible. Their, to me, their offense was not balanced at all. Mm -hmm. um, Johnson, the, the, the one time they did do it, they went third and short and fourth and short. Yes. It was great, but there was a lot of other drives that ended because they just could not run the ball. Yeah. And then you got late game. I think you went to bed a little early. Yeah, I didn't um, see the last three minutes or yes. two minutes, whatever, which almost was – Crazy. Yes, and, and, and I know, and, and so you're you're basing your you think Washington could have won by more points because because they looked so beautiful in the first they did. half. They're fantastic. But honestly, really, they could have eased, just as easily lost, lost the game. Yeah. The things that I that I was worried about really reared their head at the end of the game. Now there was the DJ Johnson injury, which yes. added like 35 more seconds onto the clock. Yes. However, bad. Um, there was bad. Clock management by DeBoer, who I love, mm -hmm. great coach. Mm -hmm. Bad clock management at the end. They're throwing the ball with a few minutes to go. No idea why. I know you you said okay, they're aggressive, or what, but at some point, it's just you got to manage that clock. Um, you know, and he did not do it well. Gave Texas basically extra two possessions. You mm -hmm. know, instead of just having one possession, they were able to get two possessions because of that bad clock management, and. You know their offense is is was very one dimensional in that game. It was very pass oriented. If if Penix could hit those beautiful passes, it, they were scoring points. It was yep. like feast or famine, touchdown yep. or or three and out. Uh, and and so some of those things as we came close to the game, and then Johnson got hurt at the end of the game. Yes, their starting cornerback got hurt. So there's some things about Washington. I love seeing them win the game, but there's things that worry me going into that Michigan game, and we'll talk about that in the next. Well, let's talk about it right now. Yeah. So Michigan right now is the four and a half point favorite. Yep. You know, we're recording this on Wednesday. That may change by the time we get this episode out. Uh, but right now, as we record this, four and a half point favorite. Um, obviously, I mean the headlines here. You got JJ versus Penix. You got Corm versus Johnson. I did see an update that um, they're, they're thinking he will play. Apparently, the uh, X-rays were negative on on, on his yes. on, on Johnson on his um, first on his foot and their yeah. structural damage. So great news there. Hopefully, he's you know good enough to go and and, and be able to perform. Not just good enough to go, but be able to, to perform at a, at a high level. Um, and then, you know, you've got the defense of Michigan here, number eight rushing defense in the nation. 
Uh, but they did allow 172 yards and two touchdowns versus Bama here. Uh, so is there some things on that tape that, that Washington can maybe use to, to their advantage? We'll see. You know, Washington's lone national title back in 1991 when they beat Michigan at the Rose Bowl. Um, and they had an undefeated season. So yep. well, I watched that Rose Bowl. It was a great game. Yeah, remember, maybe yeah. history repeating itself here uh, a little bit later. But anyway, I want to get your take on it. And then, you know, I'll give you my, then we'll get into the picks. But okay. what, what are you thinking about the game, Steve? All right. So am I doing my pick or just talking yeah, about well, the game? Yeah, well, either one. Okay. So Whatever I'll talk about the game and I'll give you my pick. Okay. All right. So first of all, I'm, I'm really excited for this game. Like you said, it's our two top teams in our big mountain power rankings all season, alternated yep. back and forth. And we, and, both teams did different things throughout the year to think that they were not only the best team in, in our rankings, but the best team in the country. We right. kept saying that. Right. And here they are. It was like they were destined to meet. Um, absolutely love Penix. I believe he should be the Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. Um, you know, J.J. outplayed his his counterpart, but mm -hmm. I don't think he had his best game of the season. Yeah. I don't know if he's had his best game of the season for a little while. Yeah. But he still just he works so well within that system, that coaching scheme. Um, he does what needs to be done. He gets the ball to the players uh, that need to make plays. Penix is just a special talent. In, in those wide receivers, you've been on their wide receivers all mm -hmm. year. Um, so I really think it's a matchup of can Washington turn this into a track game mm -hmm. where can we, can we make this a you know a 49, 47 game yep. or something like that? Yep. Can they do that? Can they score enough points? I don't have any confidence in Washington's running game. Johnson's been banged up. He wasn't very good against Texas. Now, Texas does have probably the best top front seven sure. in the country. Michigan's front seven is great as well. Yes. I mean, probably another top five yep. you know, front seven. Uh, I don't have any confidence in them being able to really run the ball consistently to get drives, which is what was hurting them against Texas. They should have blown out. If they would have gotten you know, three or four more third down conversions against Texas, they yep. would have blown them out. They yep. couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, it makes me nervous. Michigan just seems the team of destiny all year. They might, they're might they not going to look as pretty as Washington. And mm -hmm. as Penix throwing those pass plays, right. they, they don't always look pretty, but they just do everything so well, so consistently. The, the, they, they know what they are. They're comfortable with what they are. Uh, their staff, their coaching staff. And again, they, they go back to their bread and butter. They don't try and get extra fancy. Um, I, I just... Those concerns I have out of Washington continue. Mm -hmm. I my, my preference, my rooting heart, I want Washington to win this game. I'd love to see Penix um, crown his his great season. It should have been Heisman Trophy season <laughs> um, with the national championship, and that's what I'm rooting for. Mm -hmm. But my pick, I'm going to go with Michigan to cover the four and a half. I just think they're a better all around team. Uh, with the coaching, the management, they just have everything. They're a complete package. Who knows? All these wins may go away and disappear depending on the NCAA yeah, investigation. Right, right. But as of right now, on the field, I just don't see anybody beating Michigan, including this team that I love that has the great passing game. So I'm taking Michigan to cover the four and a half. I'm going to be the complete opposite. Okay. I don't see anybody beating this Washington okay, team. Okay, all right. I, I just think it's too special. I think it's their Cinderella season. Um, uh you know, I, I, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. After coming out and watching the Michigan, and what a great night of football. Holy cow. Watching the Michigan-Bama game, then going right to the to the Washington-Texas game, uh, it was fantastic. But coming out of the Michigan game, I go, ooh, I, I'm going to have to pick that team. I'm going to have to pick that team. They, they got past this huge hurdle that some people weren't sure that they were going to get past. I'll, maybe a lot of people didn't think they were going to get past. Out of that game, I'm thinking, mm, Michigan, I think, is, is – then when I watch what, I just, maybe it's emotion, Steve. Maybe it's way more emotion than it is brains. I don't know. But I just can't get away from this Washington team. I am taking Washington plus four and a half. I like them to win the game. I think they win this game. I think they're the national champions. I think they're undefeated. I just think the offense is too much. And I hear what you're saying about the running game. I think Johnson will be able to do enough. I did say I think he was going to break some against Texas, which he did not do. Um, but I think he'll have enough to mix it up enough. I just don't see how they're going to stop Penix. I don't see it. And I hear what you're saying about third downs. I hear what you're saying about this other stuff. But they still put up the points. They did. I don't think J.J. I think it will become run and gun. And I don't think J.J. in that offense can keep up. I just don't think they can. So I am taking Washington here. Again, it might be a little more emotion for me taking them than, than brains. Um, they just, again, as I said in our semifinal episode, they just find a way to win. And I agree, J.J., he had a good game. 
but he doesn't wow me. And I'm not comparing him to Penix. I, I'm just saying, as a national football yeah. or a, a national football, as a national champion quarterback, you know, I was big on JJ the entire year. I think he's a great quarterback. Yeah. Um, but if I'm taking JJ versus Penix, I, I'm, I'm going Penix Jr. all the time. And, you know, I did mention uh, Polk is the name of the receiver. I think I got that right earlier, I hope. Yeah. But Odunze, Polk, McMillan, Westover, the tight end. Really just good. so many daggone options there. And I'm still a big Johnson fan. You know, he, he may not he, – obviously, he's dealing with some sort of an issue. He may not break any sort of, of, of big uh, run. But you saw what happened when Bama started to run the ball, and that's really where they were having some problems against Alabama. I know, you know, you mentioned top five. What I saw, they were number eight um, – in the nation in, in rushing defense. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I mean, that might be the tail of the tape right yeah. there. If, if their rushing D can hold Johnson or whoever's running at bay um, and really make Washington a, a, a one dimensional team um, to an, ex, to an extreme, I would say do it because I'm still putting my money on Penix. <laughs> so I got to say, I don't care what happens with the running game. I still love Penix in that, that passing game. I think they're going to get the job done. Uh, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, and, and I hope you're right. I think both um, emotionally, I think we're both, we would love to see Washington win. They've just had such a great season. It's yeah. been just awesome. We both like Penix a lot, and he's just he's been awesome. And I agree with you. I, I you know, we go back to the, the two Oregon games, and I told you I trust Penix more than any co- quarterback in the country. And I, if it went down to a, if it goes down to a shootout, we're talking two, you know, 40 something to 40 something. Right, yes. I love him in a shootout yeah. uh, over JJ because although JJ's been a great, great quarterback in that system for that team he he just doesn't have that he it's not he doesn't have the same firepower right, right? he doesn't have the same ability to deliver downfield he right. doesn't have those same receivers right um so i hope you're right and i hope it, that happens um but we'll see we'll see yeah, how it goes i'm super excited for the game yes. i'm glad it's these two teams so and, and i'm happy that in other years they had it like two weeks later on yes. a random weekday right this game i, I correct me if i'm wrong that's this was this coming monday. Sa- or monday this monday, monday. Yep. yes monday yeah, so I'm, I'm ready yep totally agree so hey we thank you for tuning in we will do a recap of the championship game uh we just put a poll out to see what you guys are interested kind of in the off season of course we're going to stay on uh, expansion and realignment types of news. There's other things you guys are interested in. Let us know in the comments. You can go to that poll and let us know. Uh, I think we're going to be doing some uh, some power rankings of different things as well. You know, we might look at uh, conferences and maybe look at. It might be fun to look at mascots. Yeah. We're going to power rank the mascots well, of the Mountain good. West and the Big Ten. I don't know. Some fun stuff. We'll see what happens. But hey, we thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.